Hey there, my name is Carolyn Hayter and this afternoon I'm showing you how to make festive pinwheels. So this is my um, social media handle. This is at Langdon Hyde and my website where you can find all the instructions to make these pinwheels is www.langdonhyde.com. So what you will need to do this is some A3 or A4 paper, um, just normal printing paper. Um, you'll need a pencil, a ruler, some scissors, some double-sided tape, some sewing thread, a hole punch, and some twine or some ribbon. So we'll start um, by measuring the first fold. So take your ruler, and your pencil and for A3 we measure the folds at an inch so mark a line an inch on the long side of the paper and draw that across on the short side of the paper so that line is where we're going to make our first fold. So turn the paper over and what I tend to do, I fold in each end from that pencil mark, then the middle, then I work out to either side. So we've got a nice sharp crease on that pencil line. Then we turn it over and we're going to do the next fold as accurately as we can using the first one as our template and then make nice sharp creases. Now the more you fold it, the easier it becomes to match up each time. I think you find it becomes quite therapeutic as well. There's no rush. Just take your time, make the creases nice and sharp and nice and accurate. So we're going to do this for the whole length of the A3 sheet. So each time just turn it over and fold. What we've got going to end up with is a concertina effect on the sheet of paper. So you can probably see behind me that um, there's some I made earlier, some plain ones from um, just normal printing paper, as I say, I think it's 80 gram. And I also have made some from some stripy wrapping paper, which I cut to A3. So we're nearly at the end. I'm not counting, so I don't know how many folds I'm actually doing. Something I will say about the A3 is it doesn't it's not an exact fit so you get to the near the end and you'll probably find the last one it's only about half an inch so what I do is I fold it so it's in the middle of the width of the paper I don't think you can see that that one's slightly narrower and I've made it put it in the middle like that now we've done that, we're going to fold this back on itself. Sorry, I've got one I made earlier and I'm just trying to make sure that I match up the right sides. So we fold it in half, we've got the center, and this is where we use our sewing thread. To secure it. So we wrap the thread round two or three times 
and then tie it in a nice double knot. to secure that paper like that cut off the ends put that in the bin and so here's one I made earlier so now we've got two identical pieces of paper what we're going to do I've actually got the two sides where the paper is narrower in width to stick together like that so I could have done it so we've got a fat one and a thin one, but to, to make it nice and neat, I've got the two thin ones. I'm going to put some double-sided tape on and stick together. So I'll flatten this one out, take my double-sided tape and put it across Whole width. Like that. And then peel it back. And we're going to put this other one, this matching one. on top and we want to try and match it up nicely. The best thing is to stand it on its end like that and then rub it together like that. So now we've got this lovely bow tie effect. And what we're going to do next, because I'd quite like this to be a patterned one, so it's not just a plain wheel, like a snowflake effect. I'm going to cut just a couple of triangles out. Of either end. I'm trying to make them roughly symmetrical. that in the bin. And now what we're going to do, we're going to open out each side of the wheel, so each semicircle, and we're going to stick them together. So now we're going to put a piece of double-sided tape down this length, and we're going to stick that one over onto it. So put it down flat again. Open up your tape, avoid where you've cut the triangle out so you haven't got a sticky edge um, showing. So push it down hard, peel it off, and then fold these together. So the best thing is to try and Take the corner of each one and match it up and then pinch it together back to the middle. So now we've got the first half of our wheel. Now we're going to do exactly the same. I mean, it's not quite so simple because um, we've got to put these together because we've all we can't, we can't do it flat this time, we've got to do it like this because of the other semicircle already being done. So again, take your double-sided tape, put it on half the length. Cut it off at the edge. So can you see, we've got it on here. So it doesn't overlap where we've taken the triangle out, so there won't be any sticky side exposed. Now I'm just going to peel it back. Just 
go that piece away. And this time, I'm going to take the corners and match them together. Pinch and push back to the middle. Then we have our pinwheel. The last thing to do is to punch a hole in one of these end pieces. I'm going to use this, just pinch a hole. And take one of your um, Faker's Twines. I've not used the green and white one yet, so I'm actually going to use green and white for this one. I mean, obviously it depends on your colour scheme or your Christmas scheme, what colour you choose. And you can use this, or you can use um, a garden twine or a, um, a ribbon. And just put it through the hole. Tie a knot. Tie another one. And then make sure you've got enough length to tie it to work whether you're going to pin it to the ceiling or tie it to um, a branch. That's just make sure you've got enough um, length of twine there to do that. So that um, is your A3 white paper pinwheel. I hope you agree it looks effective and uh, I will hang it up with the others now. Thank you for tuning in. As I say, if you want um, to see the instructions written down it is on my website um, which is langdonhide.com just search for pinwheel and the um, article will come up and will give you the full instructions so thank you for watching and i hope you've enjoyed uh, this little demonstration